Uh, welcome, everyone. We're on to the, uh, the, the fourth Wednesday gathering in Lent, although we started um, one week before Lent, so we're on the fifth sign. So I'll let Stephen lead the way in. Thanks, Pastor Tim. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, there are just uh, over two weeks remaining before what Christians call Holy Week begins. Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday, a remembrance of Jesus entering into Jerusalem to the shouts of praise. It moves toward what has been called Monday Thursday, the day we remember the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples, the occasion in which Jesus clearly described what lay ahead of them and the significance of what he was sent to do. The next day is Good Friday, the day of Christ's passion. As he was nailed to the cross, it was our sin that he took it on. The week ends with celebration of Easter as we remember and continue to celebrate the reality that he rose. Christ conquered death and sickness and pain and triumphed eternally. Friends, we may feel distant, but as we pray, sing hymns, and reflect on scripture readings, may we sense our drawing near to one another and Christ in these days. Let us look forward to a tremendous worship of celebrating our Lord and our community together in, in the not too distant future. Let us take a moment of silence as we gather to sing the opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, verses 1 and 4. join our hearts in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have called us to love mercy, to act justly, and to walk humbly before you. We recognize you as the one who alone knows us perfectly. We come before you as a people desperate for your life-giving word. Speak to us freshly as we seek to find our rest in you. Forgive, compassionate Father, our many faults. Forgive our pride and selfishness. As we humble ourselves, may you be glorified and may our hearts be transformed. Speak to us in our worship together this evening as we honor you, the God of all mercy. We pray for grace and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture is Mika chapter 7, verse 1 to 7. I will read. What misery is mine? I am like one who gathers summer fruits at the greening of the vineyard. There is no cluster of grapes to eat, none of the early figs that I crave. 
the gathering have been swept from the land, not one enlightenment remains. All men lie, lie in wait to shed blood. Each hunt his brother with a net. Both hands are scared in doing evil. The ruler demands gift, the judge accepts bribes, the power dictate what they desire. They all conspire together. The best of them is like a rear, the most unlike worse than a throne has. The day of your watchman has come, the day God visited you, now is the time of their confusion. Do not trust a neighbor, put no confidence in a friend, even with her who lies in your embrace, be careful of your words. For a son dishonor his father, a daughter rise up against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God. My Savior, my God will hear me. Amen. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. They say, let the Lord rescue me. Let him deliver him, and he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many balls surround me. Strong balls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth has dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Gospel reading, John 
6, 16 to 21. When evening came, his disciple went down to the lake where they got into, the, into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now, it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had to roll three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus appro uh, approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The simplicity and complexity in John's gospel is beautiful, isn't it? We've been spending some time in particular, looking through these uh, signs of Jesus' power, of his divinity, demonstrating himself as the Son of God. And in John's gospel, uh, you need, when we compare it to the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's, it's quite distinct. Often we read the story and we can visualize the the physical images of what was going on, but as we meditate, as we pray, as we welcome the Holy Spirit in, I think we can read his gospel and these accounts at different levels that speak to us. We have just six verses. This is the shortest uh, sign that we read, the shortest account, um, but so much is said. I want us to ponder a few of the images uh, together as, as the body of Christ now. Number one, something I, I noticed even just freshly this morning reading the passage again is how there is darkness there. At the beginning, the very first verse, verse 16, we see when evening came. Just a reminder, darkness is coming. And then the end of verse 17, by now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. You know, for, for us today, it's so easy to conquer the darkness. Uh, we just turn on a light switch. We, we have lights all around us, especially being in the city. Um, you know, on those very rare times that the power goes out, wow, especially my girls just freak out. The darkness is so scary and we're scrambling around trying to find flashlights or maybe even candles if we can't find anything else. But in those times, it, it was not so easy. The people wanted to be in safe places when it was dark. They didn't stay out like we do after dark nearly as much. The disciples not only were in the dark, but they were in another place of chaos, the sea. The sea, even for fishermen, was uh, something they deeply respected. And when things got stormy, uh, even feared. People didn't enjoy public swimming or putting scuba gear on to go explore the depths. They, they feared it, the unknown. Yet, into the darkness, they see Jesus. Makes me think, was he, somehow was there some radiance, some light that they could see him and they knew it was him. It's not just they saw something moving on the waters. They saw Jesus, the light of the world, walking on the water towards them. The other image I want us to think about as we 
meditate on this scripture is the movement in the disciples from fear to faith. I know as a youth, when some of my friends started being interested and in, in watching horror movies, it's just something that never drew me in. I was never tempted by seeing the, the fearful and gruesome images and how those images could stay in your mind. But the fear I'm talking about and that the disciples had here was of a different kind, wasn't it? They're in the dark, and John writes, and Jesus had not yet joined them. It's sort of saying they're, they're in the dark, they're in a fearful place, but it's because Jesus had not yet joined them. Darkness is terrible in the absence of Jesus. They see Jesus walking on the water, and even though he comes to bring them out of a place to, to faith and not fear, they are fearful. The fear that they have of Jesus is not fear of the chaos, fear of terror, um, but the fear that this is God in the flesh. We think about Simon Peter. Do you remember his call in the Gospel of Luke? chapter 5, when, when Jesus asks him to go out and to let down the nets, and he says, I'm a fisherman, you're a carpenter or a rabbi, what do you know? I've fished all night. But then he lets down the nets in this miraculous catch. And what's Peter's response? It's fear. He falls down on his knees before Jesus, go away from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. The last image I want us to think about uh, is the difference between when we feel in control and out of control. I think many of us have experienced being out of control, maybe a car accident, maybe sliding on the ice, even black ice on this winter. You don't notice it on a sidewalk and you start to shift or or in a group of people and suddenly a subject is brought up and they're pointing at you and you're made to feel very uncomfortable. You're, you're out of control. The disciples, at least some of them, were experienced fishermen and they were working hard in the rough waters. Uh, they, were, they were in control, but when Jesus arrives, they, they lose control. You see, they had paddled, rowed, three to four miles, it says, and they probably were still not close to shore. But when Jesus steps in the boat, this is kind of the second miracle in this sign. What happens? They took Jesus in the boat and immediately the boat reaches the shore. So all their efforts, them being in control, in charge, they couldn't get to the destination. But as Jesus stepped in the boat, they arrived. We need Jesus in control. He's the one who guides us through the darkness, through times of fear, and chaos, and brings us to the light, to safety. Thanks be to God. This is the responsive prayer. Um, so I will pray. Lord, in your mercy, and uh, please feel free to participate by praying. Hear our prayer. Most holy and merciful Father, forgive us, for we have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Here. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of others, Lord, in your mercy. Here. Our anger, our frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, Lord, in your mercy. Here. 
our negligence of spiritual disciplines and our failure to live out the faith that is in us. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for all our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear For our lack of generous forgiveness, exemplified by you, Lord Jesus, from the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Our tendency to turn inwards when we face pain and difficulty, for our inability to care for the needs of others in their suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Sin of apathy and faithlessness, for not persevering in prayer for those who have not yet called on you as Lord and King. Lord, in your mercy. Our reluctance to live lives of gratitude in response to what you, Lord Jesus, experienced on the cross for our sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our praise. Restore us, good Lord, through the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us through this season of humility and repentance so that with all your saints, we might join in the joy of his resurrection. Amen. it by extinguishing one more candle as we walk in remembrance toward the cross. Friends, may the grace of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, 
May the love of God the Father, the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and evermore. Amen.